This is a video for AQA Discrete Mathematics Linear Programming Section 2.6 where we're going to look at another example of using the simplex method. Before you start this video make sure that you have looked at sections 2.1 to 2.5 which look at the method in rather more detail than I'm going to here. This is really a revision session so that you can try it yourself. Pause the video as you go along and make sure that you understand each part and check your working. This is the problem I want to look at. You might like to pause and rewrite these inequalities as the appropriate equalities, equations, to go into the initial uh, tableau. If you've done that, you should have p minus 6x minus 8y minus 10z is equal to 0. And then the uh, constraints become 2x plus 3y plus 2z plus a slack variable, which I'm going to call s1, and that will be equal to 10. And then x plus 3y plus 2z plus another slack variable, which I'll call s2, and that will be equal to 8. That means that we have got other trivial constraints, we've got x, y and z all greater than or equal to 0, but we must also have s1 is greater than or equal to 0 and s2 greater than or equal to 0. So now we're in a position where we can fill in the values in the initial simplex tableau. So here again just pause and prepare yourself a tableau looking like this one with the numbers in there. The values are simply the coefficients of each of our equations. So the top row is the objective function, which has got 1, minus 6, minus 8, minus 10, 0, 0, and the right-hand side, 0. The second one will be 0p, 2x, 3y, 2z, 1s1, 0, and then a value of 10 on the right hand side. And the final row 0, 1, 3, 2, 0, 1 and 8. So this is our initial tableau showing the position at the origin. We now need to see if there are any improvements that can be made and yes there are. The, there are negative values in the objective row and we see that the most negative one is in the Z column. So this becomes our pivot column. And we apply the test by dividing the numbers at the right hand side by the corresponding elements in the pivot column. So 10 divided by 2 is 5. 8 divided by 2 is equal to 4. And use the smallest positive value, so in this case the 4, to indicate that the 2 here is our pivot element. The next step is by row operations to produce 0, 0, 1 in that pivot column. So again, pause at this stage and decide what you think the row operations are going to be and perhaps perform them. if I call these row 1, row 2, row 3, and the new ones row 4, row 5, and row 6, then the first thing I need to do is to get row 6 by taking row 3 divided by 2. So that becomes 0, 0 0.5, 1.5, 1, 0, 0.5, and 4. Once we've got that we can use this row 6 which has got a 1 in it and so we look at the minus 10 in this element and say to get row 4 we need to take row 1 plus 10 lots of row 6. In 
the second element, row 2, of the pivot column is a 2. So this time we're going to have to subtract two lots of row 6. So row 5 will be row 3 minus 2 row 6. So again, pause and apply those row operations to give row 4 and row 5. So you should have this table with row 4 reading 1, negative 1, 7, 0, 0, 5, 40. And row 5, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 2. We now look at the objective row again, which is row 4 now. And we can see that once again we have got a negative value so that we can make improvements to the objective function. So applying the test to the elements again, 2 divided by 1 is equal to 2, 4 divided by 0 0.5 is 8, so the smaller of those is 2, giving us this element here. We want the pivot column to be 0, 1, 0, but we can see that row 5 already has 1 in it, so row 8 is simply going to be the same as row 5. So it would be 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 2. Because row 8 and row 5 are the same, we can actually use row 5 quite easily and see that we need to add row 4 and 5 together to produce a 0 in the first element of that column. So doing that produces 1, 0, 7, 0, 1, 4 and 42. So that was simply taking row 7 to be equal to row 4 plus either row 5 or row 8, it doesn't matter. And then for row 9, because we've got 0 0.5 in row 6, we need to take row 6 and subtract half of either row 5 or row 8 again. And if we do that, we get 0, 0, 1.5, 1, then negative 0.5, 1, and then 3. And there's our completed tableau. And this time you can see there are only positive values on the objective row, so we must have reached our optimal solution. So here we have the full tableaus. I just want to spend a little bit of time interpreting each of these. So remember, we can interpret the tableaus at any stage. The values which are, or the, the columns which have ones and zeros in them, produce the values on the right hand side. So the first one, we can see that P is equal to zero when we have. S1 equal to 10 and S2 equal to 8. The other ones, X, Y and Z, are all equal to 0. Uh, so this is the position that we'd be if we had a graph, or well, this would be at the origin. After the first iteration, We've now got a value of P equal to 40. And if we look along for the 0 and 1 column, we can see that we've got Z now equal to 4. And S1 is equal to 2. The other values, X, Y and S2, must all be 0. After the final iteration, 
let's see that P is now equal to 42. And we have X equal to 2. Z equal to 3. And then Y must be equal to 0. Along with S1 and S2 are both equal to 0. So our optimal solution is that the, the maximum value of P will be 42 when X is equal to 2 and Z is equal to 3. At each of these stages we talk about those uh, variables which have got some value, so for example at the end here X is equal to 2 and Z is equal to 3 those are referred to as the basic variables and the others which are zero so the final solution y equals zero s1 and s2 are equal to zero these are what are called the non-basic variables that ends this video uh, which is about how we use the simplex method for finding uh, solutions to linear programming problems um, notice that we've only looked at maximization problems it is possible to look at P being minimized. Um, however, it usually requires a little bit more advanced work. So you won't be asked to find minimizing or won't be asked to minimize problems using simplex method.